Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters. It is so good to have you back and for you to join us in our 15th and final lesson of our series, Reaching for the Light at the End of the Tunnel. We are going to close this session off today, inshallah, by studying a hadith which is found in Sahih al Bukhari. This hadith is very special because it's pretty much the pinnacle of everything we have discussed in the last 14 lessons. This hadith is pretty much an interaction between Aisha radiallahu anha, the beloved wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and her husband. In this hadith, Aisha radiallahu anha poses a very interesting question to her husband which goes as follows. هَلْ أَتَى عَلَيْكَ يَوْمٌ كَانَ أَشَدَّ مِنْ يَوْمِ أُحَدْ has a day come upon you which was more severe, more difficult and more trying than the day of Uhud? Now, we obviously know that when it comes to the battle of Uhud, there was victory that was transformed into defeat within a very short period of time. The Muslims had come on top and had come out of this battle victorious initially, but because of certain instructions not followed by, uh, through by certain companions, unfortunately the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was taken away and that very victory was turned into a very distasteful defeat in which the Prophet ﷺ was injured, the Prophet ﷺ was obviously heartbroken over the loss of his beloved uncle Hamza radiallahu anha and so forth. So Aisha radiallahu anha knows how difficult that day was for our beloved Prophet ﷺ. Yet she poses that has there been a day that, is, that was more difficult than this particular day? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then related to her an experience that he did have many years before. Now, when it comes to the actual hadith, it is quite lengthy. So I'm just going to share highlights with you and get to the point of our discussion. We find that our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is going to share with Aisha radiallahu anha the experience that he had with Abd Ya'lil uh, bin Abd Kulal, who was the leader of Ta'if at that time when the Prophet وسلم, went to Ta'if after basically refocusing and redirecting his efforts from Mecca to the people of Ta'if. Remember, this is going to be at a time when the Prophet وسلم, has just come out of a three-year bo boycott. Okay, three years the Prophet وسلم, along with his clan Banu Hashim were residing in the mountain pass of Abi Talib, the Shi'ab of Abi Talib. That's where they basically were and they were ostracized by the rest of the community for three long years until finally this boycott came to an end. Once that came to an end, things didn't really get better for the Prophet ﷺ. What you find is in a very short period of time, he lost his uncle Abu Talib and then after that he lost his beloved wife Khadija radiallahu anha. And the people of Makkah, who were the adversaries of Rasulullah did not show any compassion or sympathy. And they did not really be there for the Prophet at a time of this great loss. Rather, they amplified their harassment against the Prophet which then, which, which then forced the Prophet to redirect his efforts and therefore he had aimed for Ta'if. And he went and met with Abd Ya'lil bin Abd Kulal and unfortunately the response he got was not a, a response he was looking forward to. The story of Ta'if is well known. The Prophet وسلم, was basically driven out of the city. He was stoned. His feet were left to be dripping in blood. And the Prophet وسلم, at this point has reached a stage which none of us would want to be in. He's been rejected by the people of his own hometown. He's been re rejected by a people that he had high hopes in. And this constant rejection obviously is going to ha play a tremendous toll against an individual, now especially when it comes to the Prophet wasallam. How much more can he tolerate? But what you find is the Prophet ﷺ is going to be given an opportunity to avenge all that has been done against him. 
to basically now settle the score with those people that have been the cause of his misery for years on end. And what we find is upon the return of Rasulullah to Makkah, where he didn't have direct access because going forward after this incident that we're going to relate, Rasulullah could not just freely walk into Makkah. He had to go under the protection of an influential individual inside Makkatul Mukarramah. So basically, he was an outsider in his own home. And it wasn't until Mut'im bin Adi had granted protection to Rasulullah that the Prophet could now come into Makkah and resume his life there without harassment. Because had Mut'im bin Adi not given that protection, there was no way the Prophet ﷺ could enter the city, let alone reside in the city. So this is an opportunity where the Prophet ﷺ can now settle the score. And we find that Jibreel ﷺ is going to approach Rasulullah ﷺ with the angel that is in charge of the mountains. There's going to be an introduction that is done. The angel will then introduce himself and make it very clear to the Prophet ﷺ that he is now at his disposal and then he makes a proposal. The proposal goes as such. He says, In shi'ta an utbiqa alayhim akhshabain. In shi'ta an utbiqa alayhim al akhshabain. He goes to the Prophet ﷺ, if you like, I can close the two mountains on these people. And the Prophet ﷺ is basically now left to wonder, should I go forth with this and basically settle the score with these people or should I do something otherwise? Now, what is being referred to here is the angel is proposing to Rasulullah ﷺ that he basically cave in the city of Makkah by the surrounding mountains. Because Mecca is a valley surrounded by mountains and you have the big mountain known as Jabal Abi Qubais and on the other side you're going to have, for example, Jabal Kaaba. What the, what the angel has to do is basically get these two mountains and join them, thus crushing the city instantaneously and leaving and sparing absolutely no one. The Prophet ﷺ has got the opportunity. Now imagine, I want you to put yourself in the feet of Rasulullah ﷺ and ask yourself, what would you do? When now, after being tormented and basically being harassed and abused by a certain individual, let alone a whole group of people, just one individual, and we get the golden chance to settle the score and take revenge, would we not jump on that opportunity? Rasulullah has got that opportunity and guess what? Whatever he does is not going to be held against him on the day of judgment because Allah has authorized the angel to fulfill the wish of Rasulullah in this instance. So there's going to be no accountability for these actions. Yet what you find, Rasulullah he looks for positivity in the most negative of situations. Subhanallah looking for positivity in the most negative of situations. That takes a lot. And that's what makes a person excellent. This is why Rasulullah was praised by Allah in the Quran. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ So this is something that you and I want to take from this COVID situation. Looking for positivity even if we've hit rock bottom and we're facing the peak of negativity. Okay, so what does the Prophet ﷺ do? He refuses that proposal. And instead he says, بَلْ أَرْجُوا أَنْ يُخْرِجَ اللَّهُ مِنْ أَصْلَابِهِمْ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَحْدَهُ لَا يُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْئًا Rather, I anticipate that Allah will take out of the loins of these people individuals who will worship Allah alone and not associate anything with Him in His divinity. Subhanallah. So the Prophet ﷺ is basically stopping this angel from going through with this proposal and telling that, you know what, there's still hope in these people. And if not in these people, their generations, there's hope in them. There's no need for us to give up. There's no need for us to now completely throw in the towel, so as to say. Rather, the Prophet ﷺ still claws through and looks for that light even though he's in the peak of darkness at that time. 
So this is, if this attitude, this one attitude is adopted by us, not only is it going to improve our lives, but it's going to help improve the lives of all those around us and everyone that we come in contact with. This is what we want to aim for in every negative situation. Hopefully, inshallah, this has been of benefit to you and you know, to anyone that you have shared this with. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this situation easy for each and every single one of us. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala get us through this condition in a way that we come out better than we entered it. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that at each and every single opportunity that is given to us, we avail from it and we become better individuals at every instant. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi.